Hello, 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 hello. Hello, this is episode eight, and I have to remind Nicholas to look at the camera. Well, I'm uh, adjusting the mix here because we have a live DJ studio out, Big Cat. Uh, live studio audience here. They're behind the green screen. Imaginary people. Exactly. All right. Looks we like have we're good. Ready real to go people here. right there. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in and listening to episode about is going to be wellness health oriented this one mm -hmm. like last one we talked more about services businesses mm -hmm. how to buy invest into different avenues and service businesses <clears throat> so i wanted to share i haven't shared yet i had preventative MRI scan. Mm, yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, and these days people can do that, thankfully, to new technologies. And you don't have to go through your doctor's insurance. There is different ones in different states. And I had done one in New York City. Uh, it was Pernuvo, it's called the brand name. I left with very good... Uh, experience yeah I went there I was there as well I didn't I, I didn't do a scan but I was you know when you were there. the yeah. support team mm -hmm. um, so if you're claustrophobic perhaps MRI mach being in there could be somewhat scary but they let yeah. you watch Netflix in there you can choose whatever you want to watch mm -hmm. uh, I chose documentary about Donald Trump in New York City building. We happened to be in New yeah. York City. So that was like, you know, cool to watch. And it went by quick. It was an hour. Yeah, I did work while you were, you know, doing yeah. doing your thing. And it went by quick. And the, the staff there was really nice. Uh, the waiting room was comfortable. Um, you know, they the, had little snacks after. Yeah, it was New York City, so you know it's louder than I'm used to <laughs> working in an office type environment, just with everything going on in the street. But one thing that I wanted to mention too was, um, you know, even though it's Pernuvo, you know, they don't make the actual MRI machine, right? They probably well, they buy them, right? Yeah, well, it, tip it, the two big manufacturers are Philips and and Siemens, but. One thing that I thought was interesting was, I don't know, Yolita, if you want to say, you know, how much it was, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, an MRI, if, if you go to Fletcher Allen, which is the biggest hospital here in Vermont, where we're yeah. from, you know, you're looking at at least eight grand. Mm -hmm. And of course- Is that with insurance or without? Uh, that's typically what they'll charge your insurance. I don't yeah. know what the insurance, you know- Which if, they usually charge more when you yeah, go through insurance. I don't know what the rate is if you don't have insurance. Yeah. But for the most part, you know, you, if you go to Pernuvo or you go to the hospital and, you know, get a standard MRI, essentially you're getting the same thing. Yeah. Um, one thing that I think we should clarify is, you know, if you think that you're sick, you know, you need, you need to talk to your doctor. Yeah. And this is yeah. none of the medical, this, all the contents yeah. of our podcast is not financial, not medical advice. Yeah. You should always... Consult with actual professionals, MDs, the mm -hmm. people that went to school for this, mm -hmm. actual financial people. But we're sharing our experience mm -hmm. and the things we learned are on, in our own life university, so to speak. So, yeah. you know, take it for what it is. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to also talk at this on this podcast about um certain things in today's foods and things to avoid to stay healthy so this kind of comes together you know preventative skin preventative health what we can do to live better longer to stay healthy even beyond you know retirement age have energy so we're gonna talk about ingredients that are hidden in foods but i'm gonna finish about 
um, talking about Prenuvo, I can't say how much it costs. Anyone can go to the website and look it up. They did give me three gift cards, mm -hmm. which I could post the codes down below in the description here. If anyone wants to use them, feel free. Grab them before someone else grabs them. It's like $200 off code. Mm -hmm. Um, but it cost me, I think, it, around $2,000. I also had a code that someone else gave me, so that helped me to save a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, um, but even then, I thought it's it's worth it because um, now I know some things that I didn't know before. And overall, mm -hmm. they said I'm very healthy. The next scan, they said I could do it in two years. Usually people have some more issues. They recommend annual scan. But for me, they said, you know, in two years is fine. But it's the same like when I did 10. This reminds me when I did 10x um, genetic testing. And it doesn't have to be 10x. You can do gene testing there's, through other avenues. There's plenty of, plenty of companies. Yeah, out there but I there. happened yeah. to do it through 10X. They tested 10X health methylation. You know, how you methylate B12, folate, um, different other nutrients. I did, so um, my genes seem okay. The only gene that was broken was the B12 gene. So that means I need more B12. And after getting the blood work done, it showed that my B12 was on lower end. Mm -hmm. Also, the blood work showed my uh, D3 vitamin was low. But anyway, so doing this, so your, you know, blood work is also good, another preventative measure mm -hmm. to stay healthy, getting annual good blood work tests, because you had your D3 low too, you know, and you wouldn't know if you didn't have the test done. Yeah, and I think the only reason for me why I got my vitamin D level checked was... I think it was my mom was I'm not exactly sure where it came up, but um, it was years ago. They were reading a, or she was reading a study that they did about vitamin D levels. And most people think that they can get enough vitamin D by just being out in the sun and being active. But they did a study on um, some surfers, um, actually a lot of surfers in Hawaii that are essentially outside all the time, every day, all day. And even they were low on d3 yeah which is kind of surprising and d3 is a hormone it's not even actually mm -hmm. and it's called vitamin but it's kind of like a hormone so you know a body can convert it from the sun but it's mm -hmm. not always like efficient and not everyone can do it yeah and i find just for myself that um i don't feel as fatigued towards the end of the day if i keep up with um just a generic well, I guess it's not a generic D3 it's not supplement, generic. but it's from uh, Healthy Living, which is like a, a health, city market, or, city market yeah. or Costco has good ones too. I mean, Healthy Living has one. Yeah, those good ones too. But any, you know, any like health, the liquid yeah, health food store, ones. and it takes a couple seconds in the morning, a couple of drops, um, and then you know, drink a glass of water type deal and. Yeah, pretty good to go. Yeah, so the, it's a good point you brought up mm -hmm. that. People say, well, there's studies done that vitamins is just like expensive pee, whatever. Uh, to some degree, it is. Mm -hmm. Your body excretes like water-soluble vitamins that we don't need, like B, let's say, or C. But what if you don't have enough of it, you know? Then it will just take what it needs and then excretes yeah. the rest. With vitamin D, it won't. It's fat soluble so you want to be more careful to not overdose on those because your body cannot easily get rid of it but um you know it's it's pee until you're actually deficient that it's not pee you know and there's so many like if you take multivitamin you mm -hmm. can't even test all these compounds that are in there you know because all these chromium magnesium uh se selenium uh, all the B vitamins, A, C, like you can't be testing that. You don't even know if you, so, you know, it's just like insurance policy, you know, you might not need all those that's in the multivitamin, mm -hmm. but there might be some that you do need extra that you don't get enough in your diet, you know? Yeah. And it's important too, when you are looking at supplements or dietary supplements is do a little research, make sure that you're getting 
a quality product. Yeah. And um, make sure that there's, I, I think, you know, Yolita probably knows this more than I do, but, um, you know, with certain like juice drinks, I think as, if it's like cold pressed um, juice, it, it doesn't like destroy the vitamins. Yes. And then if it's pasteurized, it like I think it destroys the vitamins. Is that Some, correct? Yeah. Almost. Yeah. So it's you know it's kind of like well I'm drinking juice and it's like well you're kind of just drinking They're like kinda, yeah. But sometimes they mm -hmm. add back. So what happens? Um, they destroy the vitamins during yeah. processing, but then they will like fortify. That's the same like with breads and pastas. Yeah. What happens? Yeah, fortified with vitamin D. But often they use cheap forms of right. vitamins right. like the synthetic you know generic ones for example there is b12 psyocobalamin oxycobalamin methylcobalamin so people that takes psyocobalamin which is the cheap form of b12 if they don't methylate for example if like i genetically don't methylate no matter how much i take of it if it's not methylcobalamin that's already been methylated for easier absorption like i mm -hmm. probably won't absorb a lot of that right so it's important so so my favorite vitamin is actually it's called um i think it's called the mega what's that box that i got you as well i forgot now the name i don't remember we'll have to put it into it's the, like these the green comments. pills yeah. and they actually you know these minerals vitamins they source them from actual foods and compounds they're not like synthetic ones right and you can tell like those generic you take from drugstores they make your stomach hurt sometimes i can't even take those but like the natural they make mm -hmm. you feel better they don't um th there is a difference you yeah. know there is a difference well and it's important too for anybody if you're taking supplements it's always a good idea at least yes. in my opinion not to take it on an empty stomach that too and of course when i say not an empty stomach doesn't need to be you know eat that will eat definitely a, make you nauseous eat a medium pizza yeah. and then take your supplements but um you know, even if it's, you know, a couple scoops of like uh, yeah. granola yeah. or, you know, just something so that your stomach isn't just yeah. completely empty. I mean, certain herbs mm. you can you sh can and should take on empty stomach, like mushroom extracts you want right. to take on empty stomach, like mushroom pills, because those are just foods. Or turmeric, I, I, I take on empty stomach and I never had an issue. Sometimes it can be better absorbed. And then certain... Mm. Um, so certain vitamins you want to take with food because that if they're strong you know you don't want your stomach get upset right yeah yeah definitely yeah that's a good point mm -hmm. um so you know overall like blood work genetic testing and preventative mri scans it seems like okay that's like a lot but you know it health is wealth and if you do that mm -hmm. once or um every year once every several years there is chance that you'll find things early you prevent things like so they've they've mri found the um, t12 in my spine has mild scoliosis and i knew there was something wrong with my back i just never knew what even the x-ray i had at chiropractor five years ago didn't say so didn't find anything they said no spine looks mm -hmm. fine but i knew there's something wrong and mri really showed it clearly what was wrong so just knowing that you know i that i have de more degeneration there mm -hmm. and like i need to keep up with strength training you know it will be helpful information for me yeah and um I'm glad you brought up the blood work because um, I have my annual physical coming up, I think in like two or three days. And I know some people are afraid of going to a physical or think that they don't need to go. And I personally, I, I, I don't mind it. Um, the doctor that I go to is really, really nice guy, really down to earth. He's not pushy, um, really wants to kind of look at the whole picture. But you know, from start to finish, I'm I think it's maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, maybe a little bit longer. And that's, you know, about a half an hour with the doctor and then 10 or 15 minutes with the nurse to do the blood drawing and the vitals and things like that. And, you know, yeah, it's it's time out of the day, but it's good. 
<laughs> well, now it will be interesting to see that you actually started taking vitamin D3 supplement. Yeah. We'll see how different your blood work will look. This yeah. Time. And, you know, I think just everybody could probably eat a little bit better too. So, yeah. Um, and, and exercise more. I, I think there's very few people out there that are probably doing it enough. But, yeah. Um, it's always interesting just to see kind of the baseline too and um you know how you've been doing over the years in terms of different um things that come out yeah. of the blood work even like cholesterol yeah. and sugar yeah um and depending on your insurance it's probably included in your insurance yeah or so. maybe small copay for yeah, vitamin d small. that i had to do but everything mm -hmm. else is covered yearly yeah. but um yeah talking about sugar too, glucose, you know, metabolic syndrome is something that is a, a, a reason for a lot of diseases, even cancer. If you have diabetes, you overweight, you have much higher risk of cancer. Mm -hmm. Because when our cells don't get enough oxygen, that's when our immune system and mitochondria in the cells, when we don't exercise, they kind of wither and mm -hmm. they're not as healthy as they could be. And that's when cancer can, cancerous cells can win, you know? Um, so we wanna keep our immune system healthy, keep oxygen flowing, that which is, you know, exercise. Yeah. And exercise now we, is yeah, key. and heart disease too, yeah. it's a good way to avoid those diseases that way mm -hmm. we can't say 100 percent. you know we can't avoid anything uh but we can try and that also comes down to you know sometimes they say well someone is well they're not overweight but they still you know got this cancer or um or they look healthy they exercise but there's also a lot of other pollutants in the environment mm -hmm. that actually big companies they don't tell us about that they put in their products for example to cut costs you know or uh, you know the biggest one that pretty much everybody unfortunately in the world knows about is, is teflon yeah you know a, a forever chemical like that... profits for everything above the health of the public yeah and teflon is in so many things and dupont who came up with teflon knew that it was bad um you know there's like, some great documentaries mm, out well, there we don't need yeah. to go and in, get into it but i think we talked a little yeah we might have talked it about before. it in a previous episode yeah. but um you know one thing in the united states that's so popular is corn syrup because we have uh, just a a lot a, of a corn. large amount of it because of the amount of I like non GMO corn. I like yeah. real good organic corn. Yeah. But you know, but not corn syrup one, one from thing, GMO yeah. corn. <laughs> one yeah. thing that I thought was interesting about corn syrup is Ohio is a large um, producer of corn syrup. And I was I spent a significant amount of time there um years ago for work and you'd wake up in the morning and I'd be driving into the office or driving wherever and you get this really sour kind of whiskey smell very like pungent and almost a little nauseating and it was from all of the corn syrup refineries hmm, and wow. these corn syrup refineries look like some massive factory I mean I guess it well, is yeah. at the end of the day yep. but it's interesting you know you wouldn't think that a, a very common sweetener would be in this very industrial factory manufacturing type well, setting. Well, I see nothing mm -hmm. wrong with the setting, but it's just the result that yeah. they get. It's not, it's much more sweeter than sugar mm -hmm. and it affects our body differently than let's say even just regular refined sugar. But, you know, Sugar in general is not healthy, but mm -hmm. the corn syrup, and especially from GMO corn, you know that is um, could the could even cause more spike in your blood uh, mm -hmm. sugar, blood sugar, and um, well, this is actually it doesn't matter GMO or non GMO corn, you know. It'll, that corn syrup will spike your blood sugar. But mm -hmm. the thing with GMO corn is that like, I know that some people 
have much more allergies these days. And that's what some people say it contributes to all the GMO foods because they've been like altered in ways that some people's bodies don't recognize. So that's one ingredient you would want to kind of stay away from. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing, I mean, we all know like artificial flavors is not good for you like or artificial sweeteners as well is not good like aspartame and things like that Mm -hmm. but um even the natural flavors a lot of people think that well because it says on the seltzer oh this is just natural flavor that it's like good for you oh like stevia or something well not just the Mm -hmm. stevia no the flavor let's say of lemon right oh but it's not lemon you're tasting it's actually thousands usually often multiple compounds that they formulate that taste from they don't actually put real lemon juice in there right like you have let's say a seltzer that's lime or orange or whatever flavor they have and it yeah. says like natural flavors right so it could be that they Pretty much use whatever they want <laughs> anything in there yeah they could use tree bark they could use beaver bum bums they could have used like anything i don't know about the beaver no part. they use that for but strawberries I, for I mcdonald's milkshakes that once you start looking into kind of the that's a natural flavor supply chain it becomes very interesting of you know, it's regulated by the FDA Mm -hmm. and what the FDA allows in the food stream. Yeah. You know, for potatoes about how much per, you know, rot per tonnage that is actually acceptable. Like for pesticides? No, like, uh, you know, in a ton of potatoes, you know, 5% of it is allowed to be basically rotten because, you know, it gets kind of mixed in Mm -hmm. with everything. Well, rotten is, yeah, I mean, mold is not good too. um, It was years ago, I was reading an article, I think it was actually, um, it was like a, a, a juice drink. Um, that said it was made with spring water. Mm-hmm. And I think the general person looks at it and goes, oh, this is great. It's made with spring water, you know? Yeah. And it c- turns out that it was a- that they were using a gallon of spring water per, I think it was like a thousand gallons. gallons of- no, like a thousand gallons oh of municipal water. Okay. So it's just kind of, I mean, you know, a lot of things in this world is marketing. Uh, you know how many different yeah. companies make a t-shirt and some sell for $500 yeah. some sell for $5 it's marketing oh yeah but it's also that kind of the consumer not necessarily well kind of tricking the consumer i guess you know well that's why we have to be our own yeah advocates and you know at mm-hmm. the end of the day i think what most people understand or should understand is like anything packaged processed probably the, is not made for in your best interest. It's probably right. made, you know, it's it's sort of made in the interest to look, let's prolong the shelf life as long mm-hmm. as possible, add pesticide. Well, they add, of course, on the first step of production, they use pesticides on these mass uh, crops, and then they use, if they're not organic, mm-hmm. um, and then they use... Um, preservatives to prolong shell life you know if something lasts like two three five years you know it cannot be normal natural and it's the you know the pesticide or not the pesticide excuse me the um the preservative that yolita has been talking about the most the past couple of weeks is tbhq yeah which when you start looking at what type of foods tbhq is in it's in pretty much everything (laughs) especially packaged foods and the way that i not everything they actually reduced a l- and, and i know like someone said mcdonald's used to use it they no longer use that one the way but that, there is a lot of, yeah a lot so you know i like foods. um reese's peanut butter cups is one of my favorite you know chocolate snacks or junk food or whatever you want to call it and i remember years ago i looked at the ingredients and i was like what's this tbhq stuff so i googled it and it's a food preservative derived from butane and I'm like, hmm, okay, food, preservative, okay, but derived from butane doesn't seem right. <laughs> well, the FDA says is safe in small quantities, but then, like, if you have 
multiple foods or candies that have it like and you have a small child that right. may be eating a lot of it during Halloween or mm -hmm. other holidays like the studies showed and I don't have the exact study to pull up right now but I've seen some studies do show that it has coloration in animal studies it had cancer increased risk mm -hmm. Uh, maybe, I don't know if there's any human studies, but there were clearly, and even if the EA says, you know, people should not consume like more than 0.05% mm -hmm. of their diet, shouldn't have this thing in it. But how can we measure, you know, when you have like different foods that, like package? I mean, right. if you don't eat package processed stuff, you'll say, you'll be safe. But if, you know, like how many people can always avoid those things well and even if um you know the the part where you mentioned mcdonald's doesn't use tbhq anymore um i i i don't know if they were or they ever were using it or not but um going back to something like teflon okay you know so dupont's like okay teflon can't do it anymore we're going to come up with a new formulation and they came up with project x is what they named it which is essentially teflon with a very slightly tweaked formula that's essentially the same thing so it's like, you know, these companies, uh, something gets a bad rap. Okay, TBHQ has got a bad rap. So, you know, they replace it with something else that's probably just equally as bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think where we're going with that is, you know, be very mindful about what you're eating. I guess read the labels. Yeah, read the labels. And, you know, I try to read the labels as much as I can. Um, you know, sometimes it comes down to... Well, okay, maybe this isn't the best thing, but it's soul food, you know, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But just trying to, you know, be more mindful about what you're eating. And a lot of things, like um, I've been on this, like, chocolate kick, making homemade chocolate yeah. recently. And a lot of this stuff, especially chocolate, I mean, I know that there's not a ton of ingredients in making chocolate, but you can make great homemade chocolate it's amazing and tastes amazing i don't know easy to it's make. probably not even five maybe ten minutes you know from almost start to finish um that has three ingredients in it you know exactly what's in it and four if you count the almonds that we usually put in it but it kind of opens up your eyes to okay do i really need to buy this chocolate from the, For the grocery $10? store and even some of the you know, high-end chocolate that you would think would be really good for you might not be that great for you. Or it the... costs a lot. Yeah, if or you it... buy organic yeah. chocolate bars, they're not cheap. Yeah. And rightfully so, because like, right. you know, buy organic. So what we, so all you need, the secret recipe, organic cocoa, cocoa powder. Yeah, a cup of And each, sweetener, and like a, a maple or sugar. A fourth I or mean, a third of a cup of sweetener. Too. Personally, I, I found that um, maple syrup is the, yeah. the the better of the sweeteners. And, you know, we're in Vermont, so maple syrup is very plentiful. Um, but the maple yeah. syrup that we've been using for the past, I don't know, six, seven, eight months is, uh, you know, from a coworker, you know, family Local. type deal. Yeah, there. and then you just need the double pot, like a top glass Tupperware works, put I, it in another I, pot I think with water and then melt it. I and think you're put overstating the this, this double pot too, you know, take a, a stainless steel pot, put a piece of Pyrex inside of it and that's about it. Well, yeah, it's easy. <laughs> yeah, and it's then you melt, easy. you mix all ingredients, all three ingredients. Like also you can add any type of nuts that you want, the yeah. fourth or berries or the dried Berries, yeah, whatever I mean. you want. You yeah, a uh, little hemp seeds or any sort of um, cocoa flake, coconut flakes, mm. whatever flavor you want the chocolate yeah. to have, you know. You could add milk if you wanted to make milk chocolates instead of dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. So there's so many variations you yeah. could have. And then let it sit to dry for, you can use ice cube, uh, silicone ice cube trays and then let it dry for a couple hours, and then you have yourself a nice um, yeah, organic or, chocolate. You know, we've just well, been, if you buy organic, yeah, cocoa. kind of just dumping it into a, like a, a glass, like pie pie dish too, and you just kind of let it. And then you could cut it up. Yeah, you just let it, you know, cure or whatever, yeah. dump it out, break it up into little chunks. Yeah. And talking about Teflon, when we switch now, we use stainless steel cookware. Mm -hmm. 
but also I've seen some people use ceramics. Like yeah. I, I never tried those, but I saw they market them a lot on Facebook. Um, yeah, think, and our brother-in-law uses those. Yeah, he I said think, he really. Yeah, I, them. I forgot to ask Chris um, about that if. Because, you know, with like stainless or excuse me, with uh, nonstick, you don't want to use metal, you know, spatulas right. and things yeah. like that. So I don't know if it's the same with ceramic. I'm but... not sure. Yeah. Because we switch our spatulas on now stainless steel yeah. too because we don't want any like plastics leaching into our food. Right. And so the other um, food additive that comes to mind is like food plastics. Mm -hmm. There are microplastics in food. Like I just saw hot dog um video about hot dogs how if you like look under microscope and there is actually remnants of plastic in them because like you know they feed for example pigs all sort of if they feed them weird stuff so they accumulate these microplastics mm -hmm. and then it ends up in them and then it ends up in meat and then it ends up in us you yeah. know so well, cheap like yeah, foods yeah. like that can yeah. have especially with plastics i mean unfortunately it, like we're swimming in a sea of plastic it, it's just kind of crazy yeah. it's everywhere and that's even with um conscious home environments you know right. we, like we were drinking talking my coffee out of a plastic yeah well um that's why you know make make you can we can make coffee at home yeah. we got the eco pods for coffee yeah that are less waste mm -hmm. or bring your own cups to like starbucks they if you bring your own cup they give you some yeah. sort of little discount too or something like that yeah it's but, funny you mentioned um um what would you just meant starbucks yeah i hadn't been to starbucks in a long time and i met up with an associate a couple of weeks ago at starbucks i was like oh well, you know she sent me a text hey i'm running a few minutes later i was like okay yeah no problem to get a coffee and so i go up and order a large black iced coffee it's kind of my go-to drink even in the middle of the winter when it's negative 20 out yeah and uh, the barista she was like oh that's um five five dollars and one cent i always thought the one cent was interesting mm -hmm. but i was like a large black iced coffee is five dollars that if just you go to crazy. any other local shop it's gonna be I, that too yeah i guess i don't know I, it's high margin yeah high margin and um you know people that go but to everything Starbucks every day, everything yeah, kind of ridiculous. is inflation i guess yeah but um, what I, I have a note here about microplastics. So also, mm. you know, the source of it could be seafood because a lot yeah. of our waste goes to oceans, like from the plastic making. Because our clothing is a lot of it is yeah, plastic, plastic and oil byproducts. That's yeah. why I've been trying to wear like cotton and cotton jeans and try to buy new shirts that are more cotton than plastics because uh, it's healthier more breathable yeah, too um like rayon and uh polyester it's like in everything because a lot of people like to wear what's called yeah like active wear which is typically just polyester or rayon you know yeah. derived from you know, essentially plastic or oil yeah it's like more than 50 percent mm -hmm. of our clothing in the world is now made from plastic yeah but it says like honey, salt, and even drinking water. Cause mm -hmm. honey, cause bees could pick up those from the environment, yeah. the little p microplastic particles. And then, you know, fish can eat those little microplastics too. Yeah. And, and for anybody that hasn't seen like the raw material, so to speak, that goes into plastic. So like if it's ABS, for example, do a quick Google search for what like raw ABS looks like. And they're these tiny little pellets, like maybe a quarter of the size of a, a BB type deal. Mm -hmm. Very, very small. So you have to think, you know, the, the lifespan of plastic going from the raw material to the finished product of, you know, being trucked around and everything. Yeah. And, you know, these little pieces being spilt all over the place or just, yeah. you know, it's like kind of crazy. How yeah. How much plastic is everywhere? Yeah, it's it's suffocating how mm -hmm. much there yeah. is. Um, the other thing worth mentioning, mm -hmm. um, and this is I find it especially popular in the U.S. I'm originally from Europe, 
I feel like we have less fried food. We don't have like these deep fried chicken stuffs as yeah. much. We don't have as much. French fries is a classic American food, okay? Like, well, I don't think French fries originated from Europe. Well, they? French fries, cheeseburgers, I yeah. think barbecue. Pizza. Yeah. A lot of I mean, that... it's Italian, but it's Americanized. Pizza yeah, is I, different. I think the American diet is very, like, heavy on carbs, very heavy on sweets, kind of like that soul food. So but what speak, I was going to say, yeah. it's soul because it's been marketed that way. Yeah. But actually, so what, what I'm going with this is that mm -hmm. what happens with these starchy foods like potatoes and grains that mm -hmm. are cooked at high temperatures and doesn't really happen at lower temperatures if you say you cook something in the pan with an olive oil. Mm -hmm. But when you like deep fry, the temperature is super high in mm -hmm. there and it cooks super quick. And that's mm -hmm. why restaurants love it. And that's why it's cheaper. Why do you think the fried chicken is cheaper than grilled chicken? Because fried one is much faster. You mm. can make three fried meals by the time you make one grilled chicken breast, mm. you know? Mm. It's not the cost of the chicken. It, the cost is the same as the time that mm. we pay more for grilled food. So because it's cheaper, I think that's why it got so popularized. It does taste good, but what it has is it has acrylamide. So those acrylamides that form doing frying is is actually by international agency for research and cancer it's it's classified as a probable human carcinogen you know and mm -hmm. it's been known for a while so that's why trying to avoid a lot of fried foods and you know instead boil something boil potatoes make mashed potatoes mm -hmm. instead of frying you know stuff all the time or chicken grill it yeah my mom always says the best, you know, spot to shop in the grocery store is the outer section, which is more of the raw ingredients and, yeah. and making things. And the more that we kind of do some stuff with Green Chef at home, which is one of those meal delivery services that focuses more on mm -hmm. organic food is that, I mean, I've always said I've known it my entire life is that, you know, cooking is not that difficult no it's not it's sometimes it's the time and you know your work long day or you, you know and it's you got to make the time to do it but it, you know packaged food the convenience factor mm -hmm. yeah you know. and um so grilling you know is mm -hmm. not equal grilling too like if you grill food and burn it up mm. chart it up like some barbecues they like, have that black like burnt ends that's not yeah. good too that's carcin that is called yeah. the p a h poly poly polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons mm. which is also classified as Sounds probable delicious. human carcinogen <laughs> So my grandma is 97 and a half, and mm -hmm. she always told me, never eat yeah. burned pieces. Cut those little pieces yeah. off. Yep. Um, then the other thing is um, benzene. Chemical can be formed in certain beverages, such, such as soft drinks, when they mm. are exposed to heat or light. It's known carcinogen it has associated with an increased risk of leukemia. Mm. So I think by now people do know that soft drinks is not great for you. Well, obviously. Yeah. And um, they I, have so much sugar yeah. or they have artificial sweeteners. So, you know, stick with water, stick with teas, coffee, um, even mm -hmm. though I don't drink coffee currently. And I feel great, but you know, mm -hmm. coffee has antioxidants. It's not as long as it doesn't interrupt when you sleep. Yeah, it's good. I think you know, with any sort of drinks, and I I know I've mentioned this in the past on another episode is when you're in your twenties, you think it's alcohol is the drink of choice. Thirties, it goes to coffee, and then forties, which I guess I just hit that range a couple. A couple months ago, um, you learned that it's actually water. <laughs> it's yeah. The, and there's a different, big difference between water too. Yeah. Right? Not tap water versus like a pH bougie high class 
like pH neutraled spring water, you know? There's I think there's, there's definitely marketing behind anything. But right? it is it is but, tastes better. But too. trying to drink, you it's know, better. a quality glass of water, there's definitely more health benefits yeah. to that. And you know, I don't think you need a five thousand dollar processing no. facility in your house, but there's some relatively inexpensive ways to filter the yep. tap water. Um, and if maybe if you're already on well water, um, you know, you're a little yeah. bit ahead. But the thing to keep in mind with well water is just just make sure that you're testing it too, because um, you know, local water authorities are tested and quite heavily regulated, but that's not necessarily the case with well water. And just want to make sure that yeah, you know, you're getting um, you know, if you have if you have children, you know, that water is not going to be fluoride. You know, have fluoride in it, so there might you know need to be a concern about that. Yeah, but, I mean, fluoride mm -hmm. is okay to have in toothpaste some fluoride, but I don't think we should be swallowing fluoride. You know, they have, well, we fluoridate the water to mm -hmm. like help people's teeth, but I can just swish with fluoride my teeth and I don't wanna be swallowing that stuff, you know? So that's why I prefer non-tap water for drinking because it's high fluoride um, concentration has been linked to decline cognitive function. So I definitely need my brain. But on the other note, um, not trying to fear monger and scare everyone and now say you got to just eat broccoli and salmon every day. Well, no, because you know, part of a balanced like, diet is, you know, I, I always go back to the food pyramid as a, as a kid. And, you know, part of a balanced diet that you learn about in elementary school here in the United States actually includes some level of junk food. Um, too much, I think. It doesn't need to. And when I say junk food, that junk food could be homemade chocolate, you know. So it's not that you want to. Treats. Right. Like treats. You yeah, yeah. You know. But treats um, is, I feel like it's mm -hmm. allowed, you know. It's. Yeah. But I think, you know, everyone needs to do what's best for them and their, and their lifestyle. But even just small things of being a little bit more mindful about what you're eating, you know, take a look at the ingredients, see if maybe cutting out some of the more processed food, um, see how you, how you feel. Well, mm -hmm. it's what I, what I was going to say is that, you know, this is not to like stress you out because stress is not good either. You know, take one thing at a time mm -hmm. that you can swap out for a healthier option. But also our body is able to detoxify a, a certain level of these chemicals and carcinogens. But when it gets too much or when someone's immune system is lower, genetically or you know they're going through a stressful time maybe they're giving birth then they might be um needing to take more care with this mm -hmm. so just wanted to throw that in there mm -hmm. um but the other thing which is worth mentioning in this episode since we're talking about all these additives is is trans fats too you know mm -hmm. like in the past like this um and oils and, and like certain vegetable food oils, food colorings, yeah. um, you know, Crisco. Use real <laughs> butter instead. You know, I Crisco. hope these days not many people use Crisco anymore. Yeah. It's artificial. It's cheap. Created in uh, lab. Yeah. I, you know, a lot of what stuff people are looking for is, is the value. You, you still want a good product, or but for the value. So sometimes that's delicate balance well um you know you can pay a little more now for food mm -hmm. but you're gonna save for medical bills and dying early you know no money in this earth worth um you dying early because when you when you're on the deathbed you're gonna be saying you know i would give everything away now if i could just have more time with my family and friends so all the money in the world can't buy you another day. Yeah. But, you know, to keep in mind, like, um, trans fats are usually in artificially created fats. Mm. Uh, like, in many processed foods, like fried foods, baked goods, margarine, like I said, mm. you know, Crisco, 
Um, so it raises bad cholesterol levels and lowers good cholesterol levels. So as you notice all these bad stuffs we're talking about, if you just avoided processed, highly processed foods that had long shelf lives and artificial colors, flavors, you will be fine. Just, if mm -hmm. you just like eat normal foods instead of fruit loops, which they use these colorings that mm -hmm. is known while well, some studies show increased um, hyperactivity in kids, you know, just avoid stuff like that that we well, don't it, need. It's funny that you mentioned Fruit Loops. So when we were in Europe and we were at Maxima, I'm sure any yeah. people from the like Europe area that store. have been there know what Maxima is, but they're all over the place like a, a grocery store but they had fruit loops there and i was like huh interesting maybe i wonder what the deal is with the ingredients here and the the packaging on the front just like the colors look different and then i started looking at the ingredients Fanta colors different too yeah i was looking at the ingredients because i've always liked fruit loops as you know even yeah. when i was a kid and um you know, there was, you know, obviously there's sugar in there, you know, real sugar, yeah. not corn syrup yep. because it's it's a sugary mm -hmm. cereal. They don't allow corn syrup yep. in Europe. But the, the, the interesting part was instead of seeing red dye number 40, yellow 15, blue, all these weird mm -hmm. colorings, it was... Um, I think the one was like Beets. beet juice. There was something. Turmeric. Else. Yeah, it was. Carrots. You, yeah, I, like I think carrots. There was a lot of Dairies. like coloring with like vegetable, I guess, extract. And guess or, what? These yeah. companies know how to do it. In oh, of UK, course they do. Yeah. If you go, they have same brand items, mm -hmm. but colored with natural color, you know, from fruits and veggies. Yeah. I mean, it's just like. Um, but they do it in U.S. because they can still cheaper. get away with well, it. Well, it's cheaper. And too. it's allowed still. Yeah. But if the FDA yeah. said you no longer can do it. Yeah. It's. You know, here in the United States, cheaper, people yeah, but... almost seek out Coke products that are, you know, are from Mexico mm -hmm. because they're not made with corn syrup. They're yeah. made with real sugar. And, yep. you know, clearly they can make the product and a yeah, good product. They can. It's just they it's cheaper. You know, yeah. A and, lot of things are cheaper. But I guess the government, I mean, I know that they want to allow mm -hmm. like the free enterprise and they want to, you know, boost up the economy which is great but then like if you have your population that has mm -hmm. bad health that couldn't go to war you know if things come to worse because men will be so overweight and not able to fight then what do you then as a government you know i'm not sure about that example but i think what the the place of big government and what government can really help and champion is, you know, making sure that there's the proper choices out there for their their citizens. And one of the things is that is you know, maybe taking a harder stance on what is and is not allowed into the food stream. And I was talking with a buddy about this sort of maybe six, eight months ago and we're like, you know, maybe a lot of these kind of things going on in this country with people um, is because of there's such food, poor food choices yeah. here in the United yeah, yeah. States. And, it can cause mental issues. Well, too. And just look, you know, we're depression. I don't you know, I think the United States is still considered the most prosperous country mm -hmm. in the world. But yet our life expectancy keeps going down yeah. every year, every year, every year and obesity rates and um uh, you know, it, it shouldn't be like that. <laughs> well, I was, um, I heard um, yesterday online that mm -hmm. our calorie in US calorie consumption did not really increase, but the obesity rates have increased. So mm -hmm. it must be something in the foods or additives that pay, making people to retain that weight more even with the same yeah. amount of calories eaten. Well, I think there's a... And, because obesity like doubled, I think? I'm not sure yeah. on that, but I do know that the t average American diet, you know, if you look at it across the, the United States, is is heavy on sugar, heavy on salt, heavy on... Um, um, 
mean, you know, salt is not that inherently bad. You don't but, have too much. You know, of it, a lot but... of people. I think when you start looking at how much sodium people yeah, are really amounts are taking, and a lot of yeah. this, you know, processed food, it's there's a lot of sugar. I think a lot more. And well, they want to taste food better. You know, make things the that food taste better. They people add. are maybe not necessarily realizing. Yeah. So it's kind of keeping an eye on what you're eating, and you know, just because the packaging might look that it's a, a, a healthy choice or a quality choice the the ingredients might say otherwise. Could be, yeah, it's lies. A lot of yeah. it is marketing lies. And the other um, ingredient that I wanted to bring up, the sodium nitrate, nitrate. Mm -hmm. So nitrates, yeah, nitrates are often in processed meats, yeah. like bacon, hot dogs, yeah, yeah, hot dogs, deli meats. That's the one thing I try to stay away from. It says they have been associated with increased risk of cancer, mm -hmm. particularly colorectal, colorectal cancer. So yeah. like, yeah, get the fillet meats, you know, a real cuts. Well, and a lot of you know, Vermont maybe is somewhat unique, but there's a lot of farm to table around here, so it's it it's costs more, you know. Yeah. No one's going to debate that with you. Yeah. But um getting some, you know, like bacon. <laughs> Who doesn't like bacon, right? Yeah. But getting local bacon from a local farm butcher or you know at a kind of more of like a health foodie store that you know sells local product to get your fix of bacon so to speak you might eat two pieces of a local thick quality piece of bacon rather than half of you know a very heavily processed yeah. product um you know one of the biggest things is with you know like locally raised poultry or beef or it's typically more flavorful um, yeah and more nutritious yeah and plus yeah. you know there's the aspect of obviously it's better for you it tastes better but also you know keeping your kind of money locally you know, to supporting help local farms yeah exactly you know farming is I think farming on a local scale, like what we're talking about here in Vermont, is unfortunately a kind of a, a dying industry in favor of th these massive factory farming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one more um, aflatoxin I like to mention. Mm -hmm. Those are naturally occurring toxins pro uh, produced by certain molds mm -hmm. that can contaminate the crops, such as yeah. peanuts, corn, and tree nuts. Mm -hmm. Love me some peanuts. Yeah, but that's why I've been... Um, trying to get you know i love nuts i love peanuts any well peanuts technically is a bean but it's called a nut yeah. and we call it nut but organic try to get organic yeah. stuff that has a little bit higher standard of storing processing right. uh processing those butters nut butters because uh, these conventionally made stuff could have molds in them and then just be bleached out, mm -hmm. you know, to processed make it, out. yeah, process to make it better, right? you know, but it still probably yeah. has those byproducts from that mold that was on there before. Yeah, it's and like it, yeah. canola oil. Mm -hmm. If you start looking at things that have canola oil and it's in, it's in everything. <laughs> Yeah. And it's it's refined cotton. Or soybean oil. oil. Yeah. Yeah. Soybean, especially the GMO soybean oil. I've heard it's... Well, you know, if it's canola oil or soybean oil, I think given the two, at least there's actually a thing called soybeans. You know? mm -hmm. Canola oil is just refined cotton see yeah. oil they found if they Highly kept refining, refined, it, refining yeah. it refining it refining it refining it but i've heard mm. it does have some omega-3s mm. in it it's not like the very very worst yeah. one but i know that soybean is there's something with it that it's like high in omega-6 mm. is that's what we don't oh, want those the yeah. same with farmed salmon why you would want a wild over yeah. because of omega-3s every cell in our body needs omega-3s but yeah. when we have too many omega-6 it's not good yeah and with salmon i'm glad you brought that up the difference between 
wild and farmed is typically not that much. In price? Yeah, yeah. it's not that much. So yeah. be careful about when you're buying salmon, if you buy it at the grocery store. or co- we, we get a lot of salmon from Costco. Is Just keep an eye on the label because it might not be very apparent, but the price is not typically that much, and it's significantly significantly better for you. Yeah, yeah. it's healthier. It yeah. doesn't have the dyes, you know, because well, they... Just, Seafood farming is kind of gross. Yeah, <laughs> they're know? just like slapped on each other in and dirty waters nets, usually. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Well, there is. We covered quite a few yeah. things here today, and I'm sure there is more. And mm. but, like I said, we're not medical doctors. Yeah, I we're think, just two people. Yeah, and I think what really works for me is kind of to as we're kind of wrapping this up is being mindful about what you're eating by looking at just, you know, the ingredients and think of maybe something that you really like. Like I like chocolate, you know, and Mm -hmm. things like that. And like, I, I guess I'm not surprised at how easy it is, but I'm almost surprised at how easy it is. I think you were a little bit mind blown when you (laughs) realized the the first time I made a batch of chocolate and I was like, I was just going to taste like garbage. And I'm like, wait a minute. I literally took five, 10 minutes and this tastes way better. Is it because you were so low in confidence on your culinary skills that you thought it would not no, taste No, I guess, good? I don't know. I guess I just thought that there was some sort of secret. Special? Some sort of secret, secret? ingredients. Yeah. And I, it's almost like, you know, I'll, I'll be working with someone and they'll be like, oh, I'm having this issue or we're running into this, like a technology problem. And they'll kind of half explain it. And I'm like, Oh yeah, like I I totally know what this is. Yeah, and they're like, wow, like that took you like thirty seconds or a minute to yeah. figure that out. I'm like, that's in the top ten things for you know yeah. Windows Server issues type deal. So, but that's why sometimes, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, these companies want to sound like making real food would be difficult, so they at they try to market one minute meal, you know, like five minute dinner plates, whatever, you know, they had those fast food package stuff. But it's not that much more difficult just to throw in some eggs in the pan, you know, make your own omelet or just put some uh, rice to boil and make some uh, burgers, you know, and... Yeah, what we should Your do own is potatoes. Yeah, not that for the different. folks that are listening, maybe just put into the comments like one meal that you were typically, you know, you would buy or you would go out for if you've tried to make it at home. And just curious yeah. what people are actually doing. Yeah, would be really curious to to see what people would say on that question. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for listening. Yeah, uh, this episode will be eight. We'll yeah. have our uh, live studio audience. On so check us out on YouTube, uh, Brilliant YouTube channel, and Brilliant Wealth and Wellness podcast on mm-hmm. iTunes and Spotify. Follow on Instagram at your leader Brilliant and at it and bt. Yep. Uh, let's connect. We'll see you next time. What are we going to do? It's going to be nine and then it's going to be 10. Yeah. Wow. Where are we going to do something special on episode 10? Maybe. Maybe we'll do a live cooking episode of homemade chocolate. Oh yeah. We could do a <laughs> recipe. All right. Till Have the next a good time. one. Happy holidays.